for this video, I'm talking about stuttering and mental health, uh, coping strategies, and seeking a support. Um, I have some stuff that I wrote down in my notebook, um, and these are things that I uh, firsthand have experience in, you know, nat uh, naturally uh, because I have a stutter. Um, so, yeah, and like also, I just want to say, uh, you know, thank you guys for being so patient uh, with me. Um, I haven't been posting, um, and it's just because I moved out here to West Lafayette. And um, so, you know, like I've been busy. I got to find a routine that works with uh, YouTube so that I can make um, uh, more videos and everything. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, so the first thing that I have uh, written down is speech therapy. Uh, uh, working with a speech a language pathologist can help improve speech uh, fluency and uh, confidence. Um, so yeah, so I naturally have a lot of experiences with speech therapy, you know. Um, it was uh, mostly speech therapy in the school systems. Um, and I've had uh speech therapists who were who were fine you know who were who were who were good um but the only thing though is that in like the school systems or for me at least in my experiences uh they tend to not really like address the mental side of stuttering and also like the like emotional side of stuttering uh yeah like they have all these strategies for like for like the motor uh, a function of, of uh, speaking um, but they really don't have any strategies in terms of like emotional and mental uh, you know coping strategies um, so that's something that I had to do on my own and I look at myself as my own speech therapist so the second thing I have on my list is deep breathing so practicing deep breathing can help uh, reduce anxiety and improve speech uh, fluency. Um, so this is something that I started doing last year when I started um, speech class. I had to do speeches like in front of the class and public speaking and everything. And I would find myself uh, breathing like hard and my heart rate would uh, be high. And then that would lead to my mouth being like so tight and just, you know, I would I would be stuttering to the point where my mouth would hurt, you know, sometimes. Um, so I started to force myself to slow breathe and that would naturally help my heart rate. It would naturally um, slow down my rate of speech, you know, so um, when you're talking a little bit more slower it gives you uh, more time to think about what you want to say how you want to say it and you're not putting uh, pressure on yourself you know uh, and that also kind of ties in with the technique that I learned in speech therapy it's called uh, easy onset so basically it's uh, it's light contact when you start a sound and when I'm naturally slow breathing and deep breathing it kind of ties in with easy onset and I'm starting sounds um, not hard you know I'm, 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 I'm breathing slow and that uh, relaxes the muscles in my mouth like a little bit more for me to um, speak more fluent um, so yeah, and it also helps like your heart rate, like your heart rate will go down. It'll slow down your thinking to, to more of a calmer uh, way of thinking. Um, so yeah, that's my second one is for, um, is for deep breathing and slow breathing. So the third thing I have on my list is uh, self-acceptance. Accepting and embracing your stutter can help reduce uh, feelings of shame or embarrassment. So this is um, this is something that 
I'm going through as well. And it's a lifelong uh, a journey, you know. Um, when I speak with other people who stutter, uh, we both share that um, this is a lifelong thing. You know, self-acceptance and, you know, like embracing your stutter is going to be a journey. Yet, you can be a role model to others. And, you know, this is a great opportunity, you know, uh, with, with, great, with, with, great, with great adversity comes, uh, comes great opportunity. You know, so, um, yeah, so starting to, you know, uh, build up your self-esteem, uh, self-acceptance of you and your stutter um, can help that. Um, so the fourth thing I have on my list is support groups, um, c connecting w with others who stutter can provide a sense of a community and, and understanding. Um, yeah, so I kind of do, uh, do this, um, I'm, I, I go to if, uh, the National Stuttering Association uh, meetings. Um, I haven't been for the last two times, and it's just because I've been busy, like with school in West Lafayette. But uh, when I was able to go, it did help me, and it, and it was an it was an environment for you as a stutterer to be calm and to feel heard. You know, um, you know, when I walked into the meeting, like I felt like how I should have felt you know naturally like I have a voice and I'm uh, worthy enough and uh, these people are gonna uh, listen to what I say and um, I won't hold uh, myself back if I want to say something you know um, and also and also you can meet uh, friends there you can connect with other people who stutter um, so yeah, it's just a fun a, a community um, to find uh, people who stutter and you guys can know that you guys are not alone. So the fifth thing on my list is stress management. Engaging in activities such as a mindfulness exercise or hobbies can help reduce stress levels um, yeah so having other things that you want to do hobbies can help with your stress level and your stuttering um, when your stutter is the biggest thing in your life then uh, then you hyper focus on that and you may hyper focus on uh, the negatives of that uh, situation but when you have other things like if it's school or work sports you know skateboarding you know whatever then you show yourself that you are that you are able and um, you're like a role model to other people too um, and it, it will naturally uh, boost your self-esteem because you're showing yourself that you are enough and um, also, like hobbies, um, they can take your mind off of uh, stress. You know, if you are doing something that you love to do, um, this can uh, relieve anxiety um, or depression. All these people keep staring at me. So the last um, thing I have on my list is seeking therapy. So talking to a mental health a professional can help address any emotional struggles are uh, 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 related to stuttering um, yeah so um, with people who stutter uh, depression and anxiety are a very 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 high um, you know uh, the chances of you having that are extremely high if you have a stutter so uh, seeking help if it's a therapist or a school counselor can help um, it, it's helped me you know I've I had a school counselor 
who was uh, fantastic and she was always there and I would go uh, visit her office if it's at lunch or if I had just time in my day uh, during high school I would I would go see her and she was there for me you know she was the mental and emotional support of me at school um, so that's helped me a lot um, but if I'm talking about just like a therapy and like seeing like a psychologist um, I didn't really do that because um, I never really had any any great experiences in terms of therapy you know if I did go to therapy it's because I had to you know like you know from things like in my life you know home life and everything like um, so there were situations that I felt like I had to go um, but you know I'm not everybody so uh, you may have a uh, more success with that than me um, but yeah you know um, that's my list of coping strategies and seeking a support um, for stuttering and your mental health um, I hope that I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you guys are doing uh, well in uh, whatever you're doing. If it's school, if it's work, if if you are doing uh, your hobby, I hope that you're doing well. And I plan to see you guys soon. Um, and I plan I'm posting more f uh, frequently. I just gotta find a better uh, routine. Um, so thank you guys for being so, uh, um, I thank you guys for being so patient and I'll see you guys soon.